it's Nax and I'm going to show you just how easy it is to build your very first PC. But first, you're going to want to make sure that you have all of the parts that you're going to need. So, let's go over the list, shall we? First thing you're going to need is, of course, your processor. Today, we're using the Intel Core i5-14600K. And then you're going to want your cooling for your processor and for your entire build. So we're going air cool for our processor. And we also have our fans, which we're going to be installing in the case. As for our graphics card and motherboard, shout out to ASRock for providing us with these parts. For the graphics card, we do have the Intel Arc A770. And for the motherboard, we have the Z790 Nova. And then you're gonna want to have your RAM, your storage, and of course, a power supply unit. First of all, we're gonna want to have a clean workspace. So I'm gonna clear out the parts that I'm not gonna use first, which is the power supply unit, the power cable, set it to the side. So we're gonna work on the mobile first. Now you could work on the floor, on the table, that's fine. Preferably with a huge mouse pad at the bottom to avoid any scratches. And if you want, you could even use an anti-static bracelet to avoid static. With that, let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be installing the processor. So we are using an ASRock Z790 Nova motherboard. Now this is compatible for the 12, 13th and 14th gen processors from Intel, which will make it easier if you guys wanna upgrade in the future. So, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the latch from the retention bracket, carefully take our processor and install it. A good tip that I always like to remember is to make sure the triangle on the lower left part of the CPU is coinciding with the triangle on the retention bracket. So this is how you install it. And there you have it. Okay, we're gonna latch on the retention bracket and you're done. Next thing that we're gonna wanna install are the RAM. So the RAM is right over here. We're using the Vengeance RAM and I did print out a little something. For the ASRock Z790 motherboard, I did print out a part of the manual that shows us the best way on how you can install your RAM. So I took this from the official manual of the ASRock Z790 Nova. We do have two, so we're gonna be using the second and the fourth slot. Now again, you wanna make sure you have the RAM in the right orientation. Now, one thing you want to make sure when you're installing any parts onto your motherboard is that there's no resistance whatsoever because that's how you can break your build. So for this one, it has to be facing this way. This is actually my favorite part because I love hearing the click sound. It's very ASMR for me. Like so. All right. Now, I already pre-installed the NVMe, the storage, and it's here in the first slot. Um, but we also have a solid state drive right over here. Now, when it comes to storage, you do have options on what kind of storage you want to use. You could go for a solid state drive like this one, or you could go for an NVMe and install it onto your motherboard. All right, so I'm going to set this aside right now, and we're going to work on the power supply unit a little bit. So for the power supply unit, I do like to connect all of the cables that I'm going to be using onto my power supply already. And I like connecting the power cable that's for the CPU onto the motherboard already. Now, when it comes to the power cable, you're gonna wanna make sure you read the label to figure out which end you're gonna connect to the power supply unit and onto your component. So on this end, it says PCIe. So you can assume that the other side is for the power supply unit. And the good thing with these power supply units from Corsair is that you do have a label on where you can install the power cable. So for this one is PCIe, so we're gonna install it right over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and attach all of the power cables that I'm gonna be using for this build. So we do have a solid state drive, so I'm gonna in also install a SATA cable. Using a SATA, this is to power up the motherboard. We do have one more PCIe for the graphics card. There you have it, our power supply unit is all has all the power cables that it needs except for the CPU and I'm gonna show you why in a bit. Okay, so I have my screw trays over here. Let's put out four for now. 
So I'm going to be using the Corsair 4000 DKs and because we're only air cooling our entire build, I'm already going to go ahead and install the fans so I won't have a difficult time installing the fans of the case while the motherboard is already in it. And that way, I won't run the risk of bumping into anything with my motherboard and creating any unnecessary static. So for the air configuration of this case, you want to make sure that the airflow goes into the case and out of it. So. I'm gonna put intake on the front and then outtake on the back and here at the top. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with installing the fans in our case, but first you're gonna need one tool and that's a screwdriver. Now, when you install the fans, you wanna make sure they're installed in a way where the cables are already facing the back of the case so that you don't have a difficult time when it comes to cable management later on. So this is how I'm going to be installing the fans just so you guys can see how I do it but I don't usually install my fans like this. I usually do it upright. So when it comes to building your PC, how I screw in any component with my builds is I try to do a zigzag motion. That way the force is evenly distributed as I screw my component in. Front fans are all screwed in. I am gonna set aside the case for a little bit. And we're going to do the finishing touches onto the motherboard and we're going to be doing two things. One is we're going to be installing the bracket for our cooler and that's going to be at the back. The reason why we're doing that is because it's easier to do it out of the case than having it already installed and we're installing the bracket while it's already attached to the case. And the second thing that we're going to be doing is we're actually going to go ahead and attach the power cables for the CPU port over here at the top left corner. And the reason for that is because it will make it easier for us. All we have to do is to feed the power cable to the back of the case because more often than not, once you already have your motherboard installed and you have your maybe it's your AIO or maybe it's your cooling, uh, an air cool system. It's difficult to insert the power cable onto the CPU, especially if you have W fingers because you have a very small space to work with, which you guys will see in a bit later on. But for now, let's go ahead and install the bracket. This is the bracket that we're gonna be using because this is the adhesive for the back of the now, don't be afraid to always refer to the manual to double or triple check that what you're doing is the correct and proper way. All right, so I've already installed one of the brackets. It's already in there tightly. And now we're just gonna finish up the second bracket, put on some thermal paste, and then install the cooler. Now, don't be afraid to double, triple, quadruple check that the brackets are in the right orientation. All right, the brackets are already attached. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna apply our thermal paste onto the processor. Now, the important thing is the thermal paste covers the surface area of our processor. Now, another thing you also wanna remember is that you don't use too much thermal paste because then the extra thermal paste will just overflow onto your other components and you wouldn't really want that sort of mess in your build. So I'm gonna do the crisscross technique. Now we're gonna go on ahead and install our cooler. All right, so we have our cooler almost installed and it's gonna keep our processor cool. Now we are using the Intel Core i5-14600K, the K meaning unlock, which means that if you wanna overclock it, you can. And the good thing about the 14600K is that it has 14 cores with six performance cores and eight efficient cores. Now let's attach the fans. Now we want the airflow to move from right to left, so. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be attaching the CPU power cable onto the motherboard and that's gonna make it easier for me because all I have to do is just feed it to the back and I don't have to worry about it anymore. All right. Now for the fun part, we're gonna be installing the motherboard onto the case. Hit back our case. I'm gonna lay it down. And the screws for the motherboard usually come with the case. I believe they're right here at the back. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get those screws. 
All right, so I placed all of my screws for the motherboard over here so that they're not a mess. Before I lie down the case, I just want to make sure I feed the power cable of the CPU all the way to the other side. All right guys, so I already did a little bit of cable management. Um, I even fed some of the cables to the other side onto the motherboard. But first thing we're gonna do before we move there is we're gonna install the SSDs. So the Corsair 4000D already have these mounting brackets. I already took one out and we're just gonna screw it in. Now we're gonna light down a little bit. We did it! <laughs> All right, last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the graphics card. We are using the ASRock Intel Arc A770. We wanna make sure we take out, we make enough space for the slots. So the thing is when you create a build, you wanna create a balanced build where the graphics card has a cohesive relationship with the processor. And the processor that we're using, which is the 14600K, goes hand in hand with the ASRock Intel Arc A770. All right, I think we're pretty much done with the build. I've put back the panels. Um, I've connected all of the cables. So let's go ahead and turn this baby on. That was a little bit anticlimactic because it was super quiet, but everything seems to work perfectly. We have our Be Quiet fans at the top. We have three fans as well in the front. Our, our processor is being kept cool by an air cooler. And of course we have our Intel Arc A770 with its own RGB. So I'm really proud of this build and it came out perfectly. Let's go ahead and finish it up by putting this on. All right, and there you guys have it. I hope you guys are inspired to build your very own PC. It was easy, wasn't it? Now, if you guys have any questions, be sure to ask them down below. We'd be more than happy to answer them. And if you guys want to use any of the parts that I use for today's build, they're going to be in the description down below. So we'll see you guys next time.